And we're going to go over now to talk to the uh, a former N NHS chairman uh, of a trust, uh, Martin Gower. We're waiting to get him up. But how about that, Russell? I mean, it, it, the, it is what this uh, inquiry uh, revealed today, uh, officially enshrined, if you like, was the fact that when it first emerged that the NHS was buying uh, infected blood basically from... Uh, you know, HIV and hepatitis C ridden American prisoners. Yep. They didn't warm the blood. You can warm it to get rid of germs, mm. etc. They didn't, didn't do. It. They didn't check it because that saves money. They didn't warm it because that saves money. And then when they discovered, oh my God, we've given thousands of people HIV and hepatitis C, what did they do? They tried to yeah. cover it up. So how is it not crass negligence? How is it not manslaughter? I mean, I know that sounds dramatic, but 3,000 people have died of the 30,000 people that were infected through this negligence. So surely there needs to be some accountability on an individual basis. I know some of this goes back to the 60s, 70s and 80s, but there needs to be accountability. In exactly the same way, to perhaps a slightly lesser level, although people still lost their lives, uh, with regard to the post office scandal. You know, and Gary's point just now about, you know, will we ever get the compensation? The people in that similar scandal have also been waiting years, if not decades, for recompense. Um, the NHS, they do not learn. Um, there's a wonderful book by a guy called Matthew Syed, who's um, an ex-BBC guy, called Black Box Thinking, and most of it is about it's how Sunday, the NHS... Sunday, Times columnist, yeah, yeah, the NHS yeah, do not learn from their mistakes. And then guess what happens, Kev? As yeah. a consequence, the same mistakes keep getting made time and time again, which is why every year the NHS are sued for about £6 billion pounds in negligence. They do not learn. Uh, they do not. And uh, we're going to talk now to a guy who I suspect may have seen uh, one or two NHS howlers in his time. Not that it doesn't have its great moments, the NHS, don't get me wrong, but we're talking about one of its... Well, no, we're talking about its lowest moment. There's not one of its lowest moments. This is its lowest moment. Uh, so a warm welcome to former NHS tr Trust Chair, Martin Gower. Hello, Martin. Hi, Kevin. Nice uh, to I, see you. Great to have you on board. What I'd like to ask you uh, is about the NHS. Now, only recently we were shocked uh, during the Lucy Letley, Letby trial to discover the lengths that the NHS went to, that that hospital up in Chester went to, uh, to cover up what was going on, to cover up the truth. The first instinct, not for the safety of the babies, the appalling fate of the ba babies, but for the reputation of the NHS. And now we learn that uh, during the early days of the infected blood scandal, uh, for some time, uh, what was going on was a massive great cover-up to try and make sure that the public di didn't find out what had happened. Uh, we have to get this out of the NHS. NHS, this kind of culture of secrecy. Only at the weekend, the Health Secretary, Victoria Atkins, said uh, the NHS's cult of secrecy must end. Uh, we heard last week that whistleblowers, when they go and say babies are dying, infected blood people are being infected, you know, that they're, 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 their careers are ruined. We've got to clean up the NHS in this respect, haven't we? We certainly have. I mean, when, when this... I, I was very, very aware that this was going on, um, it hadn't happened in any of the trusts that I was involved in, but and I didn't join till 2009. But I think even before I joined the NHS, um, having spent a lifetime in the media, I um, I, I was aware of, of this, and 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 it's one of the things that is baffling, um, and it's baffling because it seems that the patient is completely left out of it. Um, it's about, I uh, used Kevin about protecting the reputation of the NHS. It is about respecting the reputation of individuals who work in the NHS. And that is the problem. Yeah. It's about individual reputations that are protected. And I, when I read a bit more today of what was going on and what was the feedback was from this report, I felt sad for people like Gary who you just had on. I mean, it's just unthinkable. It's cruel. It's absolutely dreadful that that should be going on. But then I got really angry because how has this gone on for so long? And it's gone on so long because we have a politicised health system. It's been pushed along by, uh, 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 by politicians in cahoots with civil servants, in cahoots with NHS managers. Mm. And the... That the, 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 
the, it needs a forensic look at it. I want to know who sold us this product, who agreed the contract in the NHS or the Department of Health, what regulator approved it? Because everything that is used in the NHS, every procedure is approved today by NICE. Um, I don't know whether NICE were still were there then, but they probably were. Why has it taken so long to sort it out? What deceptions have been practised? Mm. And I think, as Russell said, oh, this is worthy of criminal investigation. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. I'm going to have to move on, Martin, but uh, that is my last question. You know, one word answer. People, uh, as they usually say in the uh, NHS, deputy heads will roll, but this time heads need to roll. The people responsible for this travesty, I do believe, even after all these years, must face justice. Do you agree? Absolutely. Thank you very much, yes. Martin. Let's get you on again soon. Great to talk to you. That